Maria, good morning, Maria. <sighs> All right, so if my knowledge serves me right, both Maria and Natalia are expecting. So um, actually there was like over a quarter of this class um, is pregnant. So <laughs> we're, that's why I wanted to bring in lots of pillows and lots of props to help you get yourself uh, really comfortable. So Maria, good morning, I'm Kristen. Um, so let's get started. I wanna show you how I'm set up here first. Um, it looks like a lot, but I think this is one of the single best postures. We're going to take a hip opener. So I want you to grab something that resembles a strap, like a long belt or a long scarf that you can secure. Um, yoga strap um, is great too. And let's see, I think Maria ran off to get a strap. <laughs> yep, there she goes running back. Um, and so what we'll do here is set up, I've got a little blanket, I've been having some tailbone pain, so I've got a little blanket at the base of my bolster. And my bolster, it's totally up to you how much you want to take this at an incline. So you'll see um, I've got a block on the medium setting and a block on the high setting. If you don't have yoga blocks, you can grab some extra pillows or a box or a stool or something to get yourself at an incline. Um, that's important for pregnancy just to keep the head above the heart. And um, we won't be here all that long. And then you'll notice these two pillows off to the side. We're gonna rest our arms on those pillows. Um, yeah, and one other thing, if your hips are super tight, you might wanna grab two extra pillows to put underneath your knees. So let's get started and set this up. Um, welcome to our 45 minute stretch and restore class. This is kind of a class that I um, created because it's what my body needs at least once a week. We don't really, we're not up and down on the mat. We're just on the mat stretching and taking some nice restorative postures. So we're gonna take our strap and take it to the low back or whatever you have that resembles your strap. And then I'm going to take the soles of the feet together. We'll bring from the low back, we'll bring the straps into the hip creases and then around the feet. And you'll wanna make sure the buckle kind of doesn't align into the hip creases or the feet, just that's not super comfortable. And if you have something that ties, you can tie it. Um, it is important to wait until we get reclined to secure the strap because um, you'll notice as you lean back, it pulls on the strap a little bit. And you'll wanna scoot the base of your spine, your tailbone, all the way up to the base of the bolster and recline. This is my, my most favorite posture ever. So you'll see I've got my arms um, out. Before the arms, we wanna secure the strap. Almost forgot. And you'll want the strap to have kind of a gentle tug on the low back. And then you'll, um, the straps that are coming in through the hip creases, this is really nice because it provides a little bit of pressure on it to the hip flexors, which often get tight when we spend a lot of time sitting. And then we have a nice little lengthening in the low back with that gentle pull. All right, here's where we settle in. Arms can rest on these pillows that you've got laid out. If you're looking for a little bit more of a heart opener, you could ditch the pillows and just rest the tops of the arms on the mat. That's a little bit less support. And this is called our queen's chair or a reclined butterfly. I like to think of it as queen's chair. <laughs> And there's a lot going on. So we'll just kind of welcome ourselves to this practice. If you are expecting, welcome your baby to this practice. Like I said, when I looked at the roster this morning, there were 15 signed up and a good number of them are expecting. So if that is you, we've got a um, hormone in our body called relaxin that um, helps us open up to birth a baby, helps us um, kind of those ligaments and joints be a little 
um, more loosey goosey and that hormone stays in your body until well after you stop breastfeeding or pumping or um, give birth. So we want to support our body and not go too far into these stretches. I always like to bring in a reading of the day. So I've been reading from Melody Beattie's Journey to the Heart. Today is February 12th. This is a good reading for this time of year when I feel like sometimes it feels particularly bleak and gray. So the title for today is Fill Your World with Color and Beauty. Fill your life and your world with the colors, textures, scents, and objects that are beautiful to you, that have meaning to you. Remember that we are connected to our environment. The objects and the colors in our world have energy and meaning. They have an impact on us. The more we see how connected we are, the more carefully and thoughtfully we may want to choose the items we place in our home or our space at work, if we have a special area, because those objects and colors can reflect how we feel about ourselves and what is important to us. Objects have energy. They have energy within them when we obtain them, and they have energy and meaning we attribute to them. Choose carefully the possessions you want around you, for they tell a story all day long. Fill your world, your life, with objects that are beautiful and have special meaning to you. What articles and hues have you surrounded yourself with at home? Is there a special thing you want close to you on your desk in your locker or at work or in your pocket? What do these things tell about you, about where you're go what you're going through and where you are in your journey? So as we come into this practice, this restorative practice that allows us to reset and let go as we kind of come to the tail end of our week into our weekend. I think we can think about that reading not only as objects, but the types of people we surround ourselves with, which is a little challenging right now. But consider this a really good time to kind of take inventory of even on social media, I find myself in that rabbit hole of what am I looking at? What am I surrounding myself with? You might notice as you're here for a little bit that you can tighten up on that strap a tiny bit, or you might release those pillows that are underneath your arms or you might slide your hands a little bit more up towards the top edge of the mat. Just noticing this chest and heart opener. In our yoga practice, we take postures like this and we see them as opening our body, opening our heart, opening our mind. So you could notice the physical benefits of these types of postures, but even more so the mental and emotional benefits as well as just sort of settling in in this vulnerable position, opening up the chest, opening up the heart. Letting go of stuff our hips might be holding on to. Let's shift our attention to our breath. You might just notice it as it enters and exits your body. No need to change it. Uh, 
I notice in myself a short choppy breath. So over our next few breaths, I want you to think about mindfully expanding and lengthening the inhale and the exhale. And it might feel best for you to take it in through the nose and out through the nose or in through the nose and out through the mouth, just noticing what resonates with you on this Friday morning. We'll take a few breaths together. So clear all the air out of your current exhale. We'll take an inhale through the nose. Feel the belly and the chest and the lungs expand. And as you exhale, open your mouth and feel everything soften. You can sigh it out or kind of let it go. Good, breathe in through the nose. and out through the mouth. Let's take one more breath here. And exhale, let it go. Good, to come out of this, we're gonna move really nice and slow. You might start by just sliding your feet out of the strap. And then take your hands to the outsides of your thighs. Close your knees together like you're closing a book. Heel toe the feet out so we have a wider stance with the feet and then rest the knees against one another. After we take big hip openers like we just did with that big external rotation, it's nice to almost find a little bit of an internal rotation here as our knees are in feet are out to reset the femur bones back into our hip sockets. Hands can just kind of rest down at your side or it could come to the belly. So we'll heel toe the feet in just a little bit, knees directly above the feet or maybe a little bit further back. Let's just take windshield wipers with the legs back and forth. It should feel pretty good in the hips. We get a little massage on the low back. And what we're going to do here is just roll off to one side on the pillow or whatever you've reclined onto and then push your way up to a seat. It's okay if you've still got that strap around your back. You could kind of scoot your way out of it. What we're going to do is move to next a wide leg forward fold. So I'm still seated up on this little bit of a blanket. What I'm going to do is take all the pillows and it's really good to take um, folds after we've taken an opening. So we've opened our heart, opened our chest, our shoulders, and here we're going to kind of surrender and move forward into a fold. So if you're seated on the mat or a blanket, you can kind of remove that little flesh out underneath your seat so you can feel the base of your pelvis. And you might notice that you need a lot of pillows to prop yourself up here, or I need a lot. <laughs> and so this um, bringing props in again helps us support our bodies. If your hamstrings are really tight, you could even take, um, reaching behind a block or a small pillow underneath each knee as I tip my block over. So again, just thinking of how we can support our bodies to still get a nice stretch, but not go too far. My body doesn't like the blocks underneath. So here we're stretching into the hamstrings. Generally, we feel a nice little opening in the low back. And I've got for the most part a pretty flat back. You could round a little bit as you um, come into this posture if that feels okay for you. And we just spend some time 
which for a lot of us to find stillness and kind of spend time holding these postures is hard to slow down, which is why this class is really important. We're often from one project to the next at work, in our home, with our children. So in my humble opinion, taking this type of a practice to really let go is really, really important. Just read a really interesting article about um, what mothers say self care is for them. And they're like, oh, it's a trip to Target or, you know, 10 minutes alone in the bathroom. But you think about it, if you're going to Target, you're probably getting stuff for your family. So um, think of this class as really um, taking this is the epitome of self care. So thinking, about, I know it's hard as a mother. When I met my now husband, he came into our relationship with four kids. They're all teenagers right now. It's insane. <laughs> but I have to agree that sometimes you think of a trip to the grocery store or Target as like, oh, this is like getting away. But really, you're still providing for your family and um, getting things that your family needs. So. So here we find ourselves in this practice. Of inquiring of what self care should be. Just carving out a little bit of time to truly nourish the body and the mind and the breath. As you're here for a bit, you might notice you can go maybe a little bit further. You might notice your hamstrings are opening up a bit or your low back feels a little less cranky. We'll take another maybe 60 to 90 seconds here. So just settling in in the silence and stillness. If you didn't see, we are um, giving away some goods for Valentine's Day. So one month of online yoga, our Haumea Blend Essential Oil, which smells really yummy. Um, it's kind of a citrus uh, blend. I believe a Haumea hat too. So you can go um, on to our website or our Facebook page to enter to win. Take about three to four more breaths here. Slowly, we'll start to come out of this. You can kind of set all the things off to the side. And what we'll do is come on over to a tabletop and invite some movement in. So it might feel good to, um, my hamstrings are really tight, so maybe bring the knees in or maybe windshield wiper them before you head over to your tabletop. 
think so much of this is after taking these long stretches to cue into your body of what does my body need in this moment right now. Good. And when you're ready, come on over to tabletop. And invite rounds of movement. It's not a wrong choice here. It's just on this morning, what feels good to you. Maybe hip sways or some really, really big cement mixer circles with your hips. We've been doing about one um, Facebook Live class per week. I can't remember if it's next Friday or the following Friday, but this class will be one of those. I know Monday, our strong class is Facebook Live. Um, I can't recall. I think it's two weeks from today. This stretch and restore class will be on Facebook Live. I think the last Friday of the month. Good. All right, let's um, bring some of these props to the upper left-hand corner of our mat. What we're going to do is take a low lunge pose, which sometimes is called dragon in these more restorative classes. So just helping your right foot up towards the upper right-hand corner of the mat. I'm not loving that really cushy pillow. So you might bring you know, something that has a little bit more um, support or firmness that feels way better for me. And some of you might be able to bring your forearms down to the ground and that's fine. Um, that's too much for me. You might notice if it feels better for your right foot to be more towards the center of the mat. If you're pregnant, definitely take it a wider stance that allows just more room for your baby. And you might notice if your torso is a little bit more upright, we're gonna work more into the back hip, um, into the hip flexor. I've still got my blanket back, my left knee's on my blanket. That'll give a, just a little bit of padding for the knee. And if your torso is more leaning down, more parallel to the ground, we find that this provides much more um, compression into the right hip joint. And you might just notice if it feels good to move throughout this, like little subtle movements, or if it just feels good to hold. I brought my tea along to class this morning, so maybe you have some hot tea. And if you feel lots of sensation here, that is normal. So breathe. I have extremely, extremely tight hips. You would think with lots of yoga, it wouldn't be that way, but tight hips, cranky back. So just breathing here into those spaces where you feel the sensation. Another option here, if it feels okay for you to come onto the outside edge of the right foot, dropping the right knee open, I like to take my left hand down to the mat, right knee almost, or right hand to the right knee and take a little bit of a twist just towards the front leg. Again, if you've got baby belly here, there should be plenty of space. You might come back to that original version. Or you might stay in that kind of big external rotation as well. 
We'll take about three to four more breaths here before we come back to our tabletop. And come out of this just as slow and mindfully as you went in. Right knee comes back to meet the left. Kind of notice if you want some movement on all fours, maybe child's pose might feel good. I think one of the most important skills to learn through this practice is just really trusting our intuition and our body of knowing what we need in a particular moment. And what my body needs is likely different than what your body needs. So just closing the eyes down and trusting and just moving. And when you're ready, you might shift these props over towards the right side and left foot comes up, the back knee, right knee could still be on that blanket. Good. I come into these postures pretty gingerly as my, I don't know how long, let's see, 2016, I had hip surgery in 2016. My hips are still, still cranky. <laughs> So this side, again, it might feel better to lift the torso just a bit. Looks sunny where you both are. It's sunny here too. Maria, I don't know, I haven't had you in for class yet, but my husband is at the tail end of a one-year military assignment in Rhode Island. So it's been really crazy because when we moved out here it was just when COVID was starting and I was gonna be flying back and forth for Haumea and then we went online and I still flew back and forth a handful of times, but um, I found a little yoga studio about half a mile from where we're living and called the owner and said, I know this is a really weird question, but I, you know, I own a studio back in the Midwest and I need to teach online and we have dogs and kids and distance learning and I don't know what to do. And she's like, so the key is under the rock that says namaste. <laughs> and um, I, that next day I started teaching here. So um, this little studio called Island Hair and Yoga has become a second home, but I'm really, our movers come in two weeks. We're really, really, really excited to be back in Madison. So what a year, weird year to be in a new place, I tell you, but Ready to head back to Halmea for sure. So this definitely looks different than the studio back in Sun Prairie. But I can't say that's just, that's what yoga is all about is um, kind of opening your heart. And since then the studio has changed ownership and um, I've become really dear friends with the studio owner here and um, have very, very similar we both lived in San Diego for eight years. We got married on the same day, same year, just some odd similarities. So I feel like there's a definite reason that we were brought out here beyond just my husband's military school. So let's take a few more, a few more breaths here. You might choose to open the left side, dropping the knee open to the outside of the left foot. Good. And when you are ready, slowly start to bring the hips back, left knee meets the right. Again, you can scoot these props out of the way. Might feel good to take the knees wide and just sink the hips back. You could take a supported child's pose by sneaking some of those props back in or maybe just take it without any of these props. 
And this is nice because we give our hips kind of equal compression on each side versus that asymmetrical one-sided movement. We get to lengthen our spine here. Nice little stretch to the shoulders if you reach your fingertips forward. Just take a few breaths here. Let's take a bit of a side body opener here. So lift your forehead and just walk your hands all the way over to the right side of the mat. Drop the forehead back down. Breathe deeply, breathe well into the left side, creating some space in between the ribs, space in the left side body into the oblique, all the way through the shoulder and the left arm. Lift the forehead once again, let the fingertips travel all the way to the left side of the mat. Forehead drops back down and we open from the right hip joint through the oblique, through our intercostal muscles, kind of the line in between the ribs, the shoulder, the arm, all the way to the right fingertips. Good, come back to center. And what we'll do here is leave your hands reaching forward. You might even um, extend them out a little bit. We'll lift our hips and slide your knees to align back underneath the hips. And then you might slide the hands forward a little bit more. This is our melting heart pose or our puppy pose. If you've got a dog at home, they take it often. Hips directly over knees, arms reaching forward, and chest melting down towards your mat. Good, slide the hands back in, push on up to a tabletop. And we'll um, take it seated, actually let's take um, our 90 degree bend in our legs here. What we're going to do is twist off to the right, so we've got our right shin about parallel with the top edge of the mat. Left foot is off to the side. And I actually like to bring a little bit of a blanket underneath the left foot. I'm kind of on a hard floor here. So it's almost creating these two almost right angles with the legs. And what I'm going to do is just take the, um, my pillow or bolster, whatever you've got, straight out from the right hip. And I'm going to put a block. I think I actually want two blocks just to take this at more of an incline. And you might notice again, if you're pregnant, you might need a blanket underneath the right side body. And we'll just take this nice kind of reclined, semi-reclined twist. Right hand is to one side of the bolster, left hand is to the other. Again, perhaps you don't take this at an incline. You could just take the bolster. Some though, especially in the morning, just like to keep the head above the heart. We'll be here for about maybe five to seven cycles of breath.
to come out of this posture, you might slide your hands a little bit closer to your body here. Push into your hands to lift the torso. I think it always feels good to take a counter twist off to the left. Good, and we'll shift it off to the other side. So you might just send your legs long, you might windshield wipe or just kind of tune in to if there's any movements that your body craves. And you can move your props off to the left side or you can just switch your body around, whatever is easiest for you. So the bolster or whatever we're leaning onto comes from our left hip. Left shin this time is parallel with the front edge of the mat, right leg is back. And we grow tall into this and then Flank the bolster or pillow with each arm and recline onto this. Each side's a little bit different. So this is a nice gentle supported twist for our spine. Just helps us release some of those toxins and let go. Take a bit of a body scan to see if you can soften a little bit, even into your breath, into the jaw. Slowly start to slide the hands closer to your torso or to your, um, to your body, lift the torso. And you might take that counter twist off to the right. Legs might come around in front. This is windshield wiper back and forth. And we'll start to check in to notice if there's any um, Final postures, I'd like to guide you through a little bit of an inversion, taking our legs up towards the ceiling, just to kind of take a little pressure off the feet and the ankles before we take our final rest in Shavasana. So let's get set up. If there's another posture that's really calling to you, you could take that. Um, we won't be here long in this legs up the wall. So if you're close to a wall, you might physically go to the wall. Otherwise, we'll come down onto our back. You can slide it down, roll onto the back, and then prepare just by taking a little bridge to take a pillow or something underneath your low back. And then just send the feet up towards your ceiling. And roll the ankles, wiggle the toes. And if you are expecting, we won't be here more than about a minute. Just really good to refresh our blood flow, kind of recirculate it, give our feet a break, our ankles a break. Good, about two more breaths here. You might let the knees come out wide, maybe taking a little bit of a modified happy baby here. It's okay if you've still got your hips elevated just a bit. This might not be comfortable for you. And happy baby doesn't mean you have to reach your feet. You could reach for the backs of the thighs, the shins. I can't reach my feet, that's okay. 
And we'll prepare here next. So you might need to roll out of this to kind of come off the bolster or pillow. And checking in, so what feels good for one person in taking Shavasana might not feel good for another. So I want you to check in to see how you might be most comfortable to find a bit of stillness. It might be continuing legs up the wall. It might be taking a reclined, um, kind of a similar version to how we began our practice. Might be laying on your side, uh, might be no props at all. Um, no judgment. It is what feels best for you. You could always take a pillow under the knees. You could cover up with a blanket. So our final rest is, even in this slow practice, a really, really important part of our practice, just to let everything kind of sink in, settle in, let our body reap the benefits of movement, even um, it being slow movement. So when you are ready, find whatever Shavasana looks like for you. And the goal here is to fully let go. So let's take a full deep breath in together. Open your mouth and take a big sigh. You might take a few more cleansing breaths just like that to let go of any remaining tension. There's no more work to be done. For these final moments of class, nowhere else to be. No one needs you in this very moment. This is for you to find stillness, to find respite. Starting with the crown of the head, can you soften the back of your head upon the pillow or your mat? Release any tension in your jaw. Feel your shoulders and your arms heavy. Take the awareness to the mid back, it's resting heavy on your mat. Take the awareness to the front body. The heart is soft. Belly is soft. If there's a baby growing in there, bring awareness and gratitude for the health of your baby. Notice the pelvis resting on the mat. Awareness all the way down, the backs of the thighs, the front of the thighs, the knees, the calves, the shins, the ankles, all the way down to the tips of your toes. Your entire body is soft, is heavy, surrendered, and totally relaxed. As you stay in your Shavasana for a bit longer, I will read to you again from Journey to the Heart by Melody Beattie. Coming back to filling our world with color and beauty. Fill your life and your world with the colors, textures, scents, and objects that are beautiful to you, that have meaning to you. Remember that we are connected to our environment. The objects and the colors in our world have energy and meaning. They have an impact on us. 
Fill your world, your life with objects that are beautiful and have special meaning. What articles and hues have you surrounded yourself with at home or at work? Is there a special something you want close to you on your desk, in your locker, in your pocket? What story do these things tell about you and where you're going on your journey and about your place in that journey? She closes with, choose objects and colors that make your heart smile. As you take your last few breaths here in your shavasana. Take gratitude for whatever our yoga space looks like. Take gratitude for those objects that fill our world with color and beauty. Start to invite some gentle movements into your fingers and your toes. Perhaps you deepen your breath. Make those movements in your body a little bit larger, but doing your best to hold on to what I hope is a sense of calm that you have achieved throughout this practice. When you are ready, you can either decide to stay put or make your way up to a tall seat. Reminding yourself that you have the ability to continue this practice as long as you like. Forty-five minutes is never enough. I think I say that about every single class I teach. And when you arrive back to a seat, if you've chosen to end your practice there, take both hands to your heart. Drop your chin to your chest. We find gratitude for this practice of finding stillness and slowing down with no other motive than to simply nourish and restore our body, our mind, our spirit, and our breath. I hope you can agree that this is what we all need a little more of. So let's take a few breaths together to close our practice. Inhale through your nose. Take an open mouth exhale. Two more breaths, inhale and exhale. Good, last full breath in and let it go. Bring hands to heart. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, the light and the love in me. See and honor the light and the love in you. Namaste. Thank you 